news update for you. The People's Republic of China has just announced they are severing relations with every country on this planet. In the future, the People's Republic of China have discovered a solution to their food and energy problems. With gasoline at $28 a pint, America has found a waste product to substitute for it. And what were expected to be the two most beautiful babies in the world were born. This is the zany and humorous world of the future that has been created in front of the cameras for the major motion picture, Slapstick. Based on the highly successful international best-selling book by author Kurt Vonnegut. Slapstick has brought together a special group of actors and technicians, including legendary actor-comedian Jerry Lewis. Actress comedian Madeline Kahn, multi talented Marty Feldman, character actor John Abbott, movie and TV star Jim Backus, in a cameo role, film director Samuel Fuller, TV personality Merv Griffin, and comedic actor Pat Morita. The person having the vision and dream of combining this large body of talent into a single creative force is 24-year-old producer, director, actor, Stephen Paul. We will take a unique look behind the cameras and see how this book was brought to the screen. Also, we will talk to the actors on the set and reveal some of the technical magic that contributed to making Slapstick a movie. When I first read Slapstick, there was a couple things that I was really crazy about. One was, A, I already knew Kurt Vonnegut, so there was the possibility that I'd be able to get a very big property. Second was, it had a visualness and a sensitivity and love to me that none of Kurt's other books had. I read the book probably when I was about 17 and a half. And I saw Kurt and his attorney when I was 18, because I remember they didn't know if, if I was old enough to sign a contract to purchase the rights. I mean, if I was able to get the studio financing to begin with, I would have done it, because it would, make, would have made my life very easy. They would just hand me X millions of dollars, and I could just go out and make the film. I couldn't do it. But at the time, I had approached all the studios with the property, and none of Vonnegut's films so far had made money. So they didn't think that Kurt was a bankable author or a bankable commodity. Doing the film the way I did it, it's almost like the little rascals are. I mean, some, there's, there's something that I loved about the little rascals, and it was their ingenuity. It's like the rich against the poor. I mean, where the rich kid would go out and buy a little sports go-kart, the little rascals were forced to build it piece by piece, and they'd steal a piece here and steal a piece there and theirs was better than the rich one. And I feel like that happens with the way that I make a picture. Not having all the money that you really need to make a film, I have to use my ingenuity and call upon other people's ingenuity. And um, I think everybody gets more into it that way. Everybody wants to give more because they feel like they're really part of it and they're all using their ingenuity that way. Right off the bat, I had the idea of Jerry Lewis. To me, by using Jerry Lewis, it was putting together two audiences. One is sort of an intellectual audience, and the other was sort of middle America. And if I was able to marry the two, I felt like I would accomplish getting every group of audience to a film. Jerry Lewis is the only actor that I can watch his pictures over and over and over again. He just makes me laugh. I mean, he makes me laugh. He's funny. Uh-oh, hold it. Frogs, 
<laughs> I took the project now to Larry Sugar, who was a sales agent of foreign territories overseas and who was selling my, my first film, Falling in Love Again, to all the foreign distributors. It uh, originally began uh, with Stevens having made uh, or, or found the book and decided to take on what certainly I think everyone would agree was a very difficult property to film, uh, a Kurt Vonnegut book that in most regards is a highly intellectual property. Uh, Stephen then had the idea to put Jerry Lewis in uh, and to adapt it into a serious comedy. He has very effectively done it. I think adding Madeline Kahn and Marty Feldman has been a brilliant casting idea. I should add that in four and a half days, which is the length of the time of the market in which we introduced the film, we were successful in licensing 80% of the world. So the reaction to the product was extremely good. Now, I took these contracts that I had from all the foreign sales to Lou Horowitz, who used to be president of the First Los Angeles Bank and was now working as an independent broker. My job then was to take those pre-sales, which are not necessarily assets, take those pre-sales and other elements, convert that into a lendable asset, and then find a lender that would lend on it. Stephen has the knack of taking a bizarre comedy and putting sensitivity into it. people that see the picture, young and old alike, are going to fall in love with the characters. I think it's going to be winning. Before the picture was made, I had this very, very strong feeling about it. I mean, I knew that it would be a commercial success, which accounted for this tremendous drive that I had to make the picture, because I had this vision in my mind, knowing that it could come together as a visual commercial picture. Then, as, I, as all the elements came together and I was on the set, I had that same sort of feeling. I was now watching the visual concept come alive on the set each day with Jerry Lewis, with Madeline Kahn, exactly the way I saw it, in the sense of their size, their funniness of what they look like, the little Chinese, and all these things. What's going on in there? We just walked by Harry, bozo. Uh, Mr. Afong, when you say that China is severing relations with the rest of the world, is that because China is mad at something that somebody did? Definitely not. Uh, you see, uh, the rest of the world has nothing left to offer us. Have you solved all the problems that there are? Oh, no, not quite. Uh, we are still in the dark ages um, on simple things in life, little things like that. Uh, Gravity. Hmm. Working with Jerry Lewis, I love. I mean, for years, people kept saying, you're not going to want to work with Jerry Lewis, egomaniacal, this, that. You won't be able to direct him or run away with the show. He was the greatest. He was a pussycat. If I could work with Jerry again, I'd love it. The worst thing to do is give you an expensive product. <laughs> give you props. Don't give you an expensive product. Don't worry about it. On this picture, we didn't have any of those. <laughs> The transformation of Jerry Lewis and Madeleine Kahn from the characters Caleb and Letitia to the dual roles of the seven foot tall twins Wilbur and Eliza required special makeup designer Robert Zarek to spend many hours each morning applying the rubber pieces that were specially designed for each of the actors' faces. The totality of filmmaking is, uh, is something you get geared for. And, uh, I mean, the, the most fun I think I've had on a picture was when Stephen was in a trap of some kind and he came to me to ask how I'd shoot it or something. He's going to be marvelous. He hasn't even broken the ice yet. He's bright. 
and he has a couple of the uh, he has a couple of the elements of being a good filmmaker that a lot of people never get, and that's enthusiasm and energy. He's so enthusiastic, he has such a tremendous energy that even though you're dying on the vine, he'll, he'll force you to pull an energy from somewhere, which is a, a tremendous tool. I'm not even sure he knows he's got it, but it's best that he uses it without knowing he's got it. The fun is in this character. I mean, Steve will probably show you the, for example, the food eating scene. That that you couldn't do as the father, but as this character, it was a field day. Because I've always been very good at sloppy, messy and sloppy. It's it's fun. It's a great opportunity. That's what appealed to me. I don't think I would have been uh, very drawn to doing the film if I were doing one role or the other. Perhaps just the child would have been okay, but it was doing both. That was interesting. Children, these are your parents. <laughs> Please, God, let me faint. Me too. God, I please faint. Me too. There is a certain approach to comedy which is different than simply doing something straight, which, you know, which is an additional thing, which you add sort of something like that onto what you're doing. And you have to know how to not do that if you just want to be straight. I heard that my favorite little baby of all was sick. Roll over. I'm not a baby anymore. My dear, I delivered you. You'll always be a baby to me. I've enjoyed it so much, you know. These big studios in the old days, sir. You felt you were part of a big commercial venture. Everything was very cut and dry, and the schedule was adhered to, and uh, it was a soulless business, eh? Never enjoyed it. In fact, I, I decided that I'd had enough of it until Steve and asked me to do this. Uh, Colonel, is that true instructor Chinese? You're a great judge of character. Great judge, Mr. Swain. He is Chinese. Best drill instructor we had. Gobble, gobble. Looks like the cook we once had. It turned out to be a communist spy. Don't let that bother you. I personally had him checked off. And he came up with a double IQ rating. Is that good? Good. The president himself only has a one IQ rating. <laughs> Please, Mrs. Swain. Cinema is a battlefield. Birth, uh, hate, action, romance, violence, death. Meaning all of those things put together into one damn word, to me, is the dictionary translation of a cinema called emotions. <laughs> That's, to me, a movie. The intricate special effects were created for Slapstick by the firm of Private Stock Effects. Um, you're gonna have to swing it to your right, the back end. To our right? Okay. Yeah. Or that way? Is that, is that doing it? Yeah, let's get it. Let's see. Where is this shit? Where, 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 where,
In many cases, Steve and Paul had to direct actors to deliver lines and react to things that were not there at the time of shooting. Now, who comes in? Who comes in a little bit sooner than that? He'll be arriving. Which, where's, where is, there he is. Yes, there he is. He'll be arriving on when you say, when you say twins. You've been spying on our little monsters. Now see here. Yeah, and I would just, because it'll, it'll be so hard for me to try to time your entire look, I would just throw one line over your left shoulder and then I never have to worry. And it's back there, so if it's just, be quiet, you quack. Be quiet, you quack. Now see here. Be quiet, you quack. Stephen carefully planned and discussed what he wanted for each special effects shot. Pre-planning was the key to making the effects interact with the actors. Complete storyboards are then prepared, illustrating the entire effects sequence. This illustrates one of the more complex special effects sequences of the film. Madeline Kahn, as Eliza, sings a sad song in the attic as bats fly around her in the same shot. At the end of the scene, Eliza walks to the window. For the exterior shot, Madeline Kahn was photographed on the sound stage against a black background. This enables the effects team to place her image in the window of a model house. The camera will then start on the window and pull back to a wide angle, revealing a star heading towards the house. The information for the shot is fed into a computer, which controls a camera that photographs the model of the house. Ernest Farino specializes in the art of stop-motion animation, a technique that is used to bring the bats to life. Basically, the figure is articulated inside with small joints so that we can reposition him frame by frame, take one frame at a time, and the resulting film gives the illusion of continuous movement. And by the use of various optical techniques, we can combine this animation with previously filmed footage of Madeline Kahn so that the bat appears to be in the same scene. How cruel to say to sing the nest and you and you. Doug Jackson. Doug worked with me on Falling in Love Again, and Ross was suggested by several editors that I knew, so this is the first time Ross and I are working together. But it's important to get guys that you can trust, because a lot of the time, since I'm working on different things, I won't want to spend all the time in the editing room, and I'll make certain suggestions, and I'd like them to follow through. And since I trust them, they understand what I'm going for. And what's nice is I believe in working in sort of a collaborative effort, and each person puts in their input. Follow our voice. Stephen Paul worked with sound supervisor Chip Garamella to create another dimension of the film through sound. In Slapstick, we have spaceships that uh, are not your ordinary spaceship. 
We have uh, aliens that we have to create special voices or, or background sounds to give them a cosmic feel. We also have the twins who have a special power and, and we have to come up with something to make all that work because the, the visual is good, but we enhance the visual with sound, as you all know. I mean, you know what sound did for Star Wars. <laughs> In a fight scene, uh, people will, will move and fight over their dialogue, so we have to replace that or clean it up, as we say. In certain situations, if we cannot find alternate takes or use what was recorded on set, we go to a process which is called looping, and nowadays it's called ADR, Automated Dialogue Replacement. And that's when we're on an ADR stage and we take the actor and re-record his lines. Uh, How would father be proud of us? Oh, they will be. 684? Yep. Okay, Wally, we'll take the 684 cue. All right. Oh, damn. What? Whoa, ah, ah. Oh, wow. Why? Oh, ah. Playback in the world could do that. Who else could do that? <clears throat> Chevy Chase eats your heart out. Jerry Lewis, do you prefer being a filmmaker or an actor? Now, you've worked in every kind of capacity you can think of. Well, no matter what I've done in my career, the biggest thrill has always been for me when I can be a Viking. That's my happiest when I'm at sea with the other Vikings. And it wasn't until I first went with them that I understood the importance of sardines in our life. <laughs> it's been fun working with Steve because he is young and he'll, uh, he listens and he gives everybody an opportunity. How many candles there? Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> that, not Make one, a two, wish. Three, four, five, wish for a hundred million on slapstick. No, I want to wish to finish slapstick. <laughs> Get those names. <laughs> I have to just make the first. Look at the knives we're going to force. Big time. Hey. Look at the knife. He's going to cut the cake. That's pretty. That's pretty. It's been six years since the time I bought the rights to the book, to the time I've completed the film. And it's been a long, hard, and many times discouraging journey. What a man won't do to beat us out of dinner. <laughs> Looking back, it's like a dream come true. Having had the chance of working with Kurt Vonnegut, many of the top technicians, some of my favorite actors, and all that I can ever ask for, I guess, is to be able to continue making films. Parker. <laughs> like it's almost time maybe you should say something clearly intelligent what time is lunch <laughs> thank god <laughs> yeah.